Hi guys, we're the SFF, my name's iBlastoff and welcome to my Mob of the Dead weapon guide. In this series I will be displaying all of the new weapons in Mob of the Dead and pretty much comparing all their stats from their Pack-a-Punch version to their normal version. So we're going to go ahead and start this off with the AK-47 and see how it compares to its Pack-a-Punch upgrade, the Reznov's Revenge. So, as you can see there's a clip here of me just using the AK-47 on round 20. And it's just still being a complete boss. I mean, guaranteed, I have got, um, guaranteed, <laughs> I have got double tap on, which of course makes things a lot easier. But AK-47 holds its own. I'd still say it's one of the best assault rifles in Call of Duty Zombies history. And, um, yeah, it's second only to the AN-94 in my eyes, which is a very, very good assault rifle. But I would say it's my favourite from the uh, Mob of the Dead series at the minute, the AK-47. So let's compare its stats on screen. And you can see... The AK-47's fire mode is automatic, it comes with a magazine size of 30, has maximum ammunition which is 20, 240 sorry, plus a 30 clip size, and uh, the mobility is medium which works out to be about 80-85% to 85 sprint speed from what you usually get, so you, say the pistol is 100%, it's about 85%, and um, you can compare that to Reznor's Revenge which not a lot of changes between the two once you've papped it, apart from the obviously damage upgrades and stuff, but that's standard. And that's automatic, magazine size 30, and you get a little bit more ammunition with 270 plus the 30 clip you get, and still medium mobility, so overall you just get more ammunition. So I'm going to go ahead and pap it now so you can see what the camo looks like. And yeah, my overall review is that the AK-47 and Resonance Revenge is a great weapon. You can use the AK, like I say, up to around 22 to 25, and then it's probably best to pap it. And once you've papped it, you can get away with between rounds 30 to 35 so you can see a clip of me here just rounding up some zombies and just going to town on them just using like steady aim and not hip firing just taking them out and it's really really good for headshots so it's just a great weapon I would say if I was to give it a review out of 5 I would give it 4.5 out of 5 for being one of my favorite guns in Mob of the Dead and the assault rifle was pretty awesome so I would recommend using this anyway let's move on to the next weapon in the series and we're gonna see that in a sec their money. Okay guys, so moving on to the next weapon review, we're going to do the Death Machine versus the Meat Grinder and see how it compares against its upgraded counterpart. So the first thing I want to say when talking about the Death Machine is that it's the first time it's ever been available to get from the box. It's not a drop, which is just insane. I remember seeing this in the box and was like, oh my god! And um, yeah, the Death Machine is really cool, and of course it has so much ammunition, and it's very, very powerful. As you can see, I'm taking the zombies out with just a couple of shots, and just keeping it spinning with the left trigger is also really cool. So do bear that in mind if you're going to use this. You can kind of use it like the jet gun strategy, where you sort of hold down the left trigger before you get the gun out, once you're swapping weapons, and then you can fire straight away, so that's really cool. Of course it does have its negative points, and it lacks the uh, speed of running, and you can get stuck, but us... As if you're using a strategy like I'm doing now, I'm just in grief mode, camping in the corner, helping my teammate out, it works really well. So let's get into the stats, and you can see the Death Machine, of course, is an automatic weapon with a large magazine size of 150, with a total maximum ammunition of 300 plus the 150 clip you start with, and as you can see, the mobility is very low. But once you actually upgrade it to the meat grinder, um, of course it stays the same, it's still automatic, but the magazine size increases drastically. You can see it's 550 here, plus another 550 that you'd already have, making it to be like 1,100 bullets, which is crazy. And not only that, but you do get faster running speed and faster reload speed, which is really, really useful if you're um, trying to get to those high rounds with the death machine. I'd say it's good to use the death machine between... You could probably use it up to rounds 30 to 40 plus because it is really that good but it just depends on getting overrun if you're using the meat grinder. The actual death machine itself I would probably upgrade it as soon as possible just because it's so much better than just having the normal death machine. The meat grinder really is good. I'm going to show you a couple of clips of me using the meat grinder in this two man strategy I was doing with Merkins but yeah we'll see just quickly get into this now. I think. <laughs> um, yeah so I'm just basically doing this two man strategy and gathering up all the zombies and training them just to get into a group and then running off to give yourself a little bit of distance between getting the death machine out and actually shooting the zombies because as I said the mobility is quite low but using the meat grinder you do get that little bit of extra speed and that little bit of extra reload time which is really cool 
and I'm just gathering them up here, just waiting to find a way to shoot them. This is a really good spot, by the way, guys, if you want to actually train on Mob of the Dead. And yeah, just run to the back here and take them out. And based on what I've used with the Death Machine so far and the Meat Grinder, I would probably give it four foxes out of five. Not quite as high as the AK. I just feel like the AK is a bit better suited to some situations. And um, although it has quite a low clip size, but the Death Machine is awesome. I do love it, but I don't think it valued a 4.5 or a 5 out of 10 because most times when I get it out of the box I tend to try and get rid of it as soon as possible because I just prefer the other guns so that's my personal choice I'll let me know what you think about your uh, review for the death machine and um, yeah let's move on to the next weapon all right guys so the next weapon we're going to look at is the Uzi versus Uncle Gal which is the pack-a-punch version of course and yeah this is the Uzi's first debut in Black Ops 2 Zombies so of course it was really cool since it's kind of like a mobster's gun but the Uncle Gal, the Pack-A-Punch version, is actually a reference to the guy who created the Uzi. He was like a German gun designer, and his name is Uzil Gal, so that's why it's called Uncle Gal. But um, it's pretty good for high, for, like, for the first couple of rounds, not high rounds, sorry, for like low rounds to middle rounds. Because it's got such a high rate of fire, you can actually take out the zombies and you've got quite a lot of ammunition, so it's pretty good for the early rounds. I find if you use Deadshot as well, then it sort of makes the Uzi so much better because you're aiming for the head and you can kill the zombies a lot quicker but because of the high rate of fire you do get quite a lot of recoil so that tends to like put me off using it because I don't know I just don't like guns with too much recoil because Uzi if it's a high rate of fire gun you can't really burst it as well but let's look at the stats anyway so again it's another automatic and the magazine size is 25 which is kind of nice along with the maximum ammunition you can hold which is 275 for like the reserves and the mobility is higher so you're looking at 100% Maybe it's 105, 110% speed, but I don't think it's as fast as like the Shikam or the um, MP5. So I'd say it's around 100% sprint speed. And of course, once you get to the Uncle Gal, it's the same, but you just get same uh, magazine size. That doesn't increase, but you get 300 extra reserve bullets. And again, the mobility stays the same. So you've only get that more ammunition and of course the damage for when you pack a punch it. But I mean, I do like using the Uzi. As you can see, I'm on round 26 here when I papped it. And it did actually work quite well. I didn't think it was going to work as well as it did on the high rounds. But you can actually get away with it. And the good thing about the Uzi is no matter where you go, there's actually a few spots where you can buy ammunition off the wall for it. So because of this, it is quite a handy gun to have on you. I'm on round 27 here. I wasn't using it properly, but it's quite good for like training zombies and then sort of turning around and just hip firing them, which you'll see me do in this clip. But if I was to give this a review out of five, I would go ahead and give it three foxes, mainly because I don't think it's that powerful and that useful compared to the other guns that we've reviewed this far. And yeah, I just, I wasn't, when I first picked it up, I was really excited about using it. And then when I actually got it, I was like, I don't know if you saw my um, first playthrough, I got it and I was like, oh, wow, it's not actually that great. But to be fair, since I've um, got it with Deadshot and started using it a bit more, I do prefer it. And I could probably give it a 3.5, but I'm just going to go with a three because I hardly ever use it. Okay, so the next gun we're going to look at is the M1927 versus Speak Easy, which, if you didn't know, the Thompson was my all-time favourite gun from World at War and probably Black Ops, but the fun the gun was quite cool. And yeah, they've basically reskinned it and brought it back, and it's pretty much exactly the same as it was, except they've added a higher rate of fire to it and um, an extra 50 rounds, so it kind of becomes a little bit more sustainable for later rounds, and I think that's really, really cool. And even non-upgraded, it tends to be the first gun I go to on Mob of the Dead, just because I guess it's close to Jug, and you get so many rounds, and um, it's just a really good gun. It feels the sort of same way as the Thompson did in World at War, and it sort of shoots the same way. And it's just quite reminiscent from World at War for me, that's why I like it so much. And of course, the Speak Easy, which is the Pack-a-Punch version, is um, it's a reference to the Prohibition-era establishments that sold alcohol illegally, and they were given the name Speak Easy, but... It's also a song from Bugsy Malone, Speakeasy, which is quite cool. But so, um, let's just go ahead and look at the stats so we can compare them. Okay, so starting with the M1927, the fire mode is automatic as you'd expect, and the magazine size is 50. This stays the same for the Speakeasy when it's pack a punch, so there's not much of a change there. But the maximum ammunition you can carry does increase, whereas the M1927 or the Thompson has 350 plus the 50 in the clip. The Speakeasy actually has a 100 bullet upgrade. 
and um, that's about the only thing that does change. The mobility is high, and when I say the sprint speed, sprint speed is about 100%, I mean certain submachine guns do have a sprint speed greater than your normal speed. So the Shikam's got like 110%, whereas the Thompson just stays at 100%, whereas the death machine takes you down to like, I don't know, 60%, 80%, I'm not sure, but just to clarify that. So once you actually pack a punch it, you get the cool camo and you get the speakeasy, and speakeasy just does work on zombies, no matter what round you're on really. Similar to the AK, you could probably go up to round 30 to 35 with the speakeasy and have no worries as long as you've got double tap, but even without double tap, it is still a bit of a beast. Um, but yeah, for this reason, as it is so similar to the AK, and it is one of my favourite guns of all time, I'm really glad to have it back. I would give this a 4.5 out of 5. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it really. I do like the Thompson. I would recommend it to any person playing zombies. Like I say, it's always my go-to gun. And uh, I do use it quite often. But probably one of the best war weapons in the game. Not going to lie. And let's move on to the next gun. Okay guys, so moving on to our final weapon of the episode, it is of course the Blunder Gap versus the Sweeper, the brand new wonder weapon from Mob of the Dead, and I want to show you guys how this gun plays and what it's about. So basically the idea of the Blunder Gap is that it consisted of two ideas, the Blunder Bus and a Gatling gun combined to make this awesome new wonder weapon that we can use in Mob of the Dead. Now as you can see it's a single shot weapon and when you combine it with electric cherry because it's got such a low round the electric shock is larger so that's actually electric cherry as the that's one of its pros but um, the only thing with this single shot weapon is the fact it is single shot and you do have to reload all the time which is kind of annoying and does put me off it a bit but in terms of power it is very strong and it takes out zombies like there's no tomorrow and kills them in one shot so if we're comparing the stats on screen now you can see the blunder gat is a fire mode a single shot just like I discussed and when you upgrade it to the sweeper it becomes an automatic and then the magazine size is one but of course it doubles when you get to the sweepers that is a massive advantage once you upgrade it to the sweeper that's why as soon as I get the blunder gout I usually upgrade it straight away for that reason maximum ammunition 60 which is kind of good because it's 60 shots plus the one you get and then it doubles again to 120 plus the two shots you already get and the mobility is medium slash high so yeah, as you can see, the extras becomes automatic with an increased magazine capacity, sorry, capacity, and uh, more ammunition. Another cool little feature is the Blunder Gat. When you upgrade it to the Sweeper, it's the only gun that doesn't get the Pack-a-Punch camo, as you can see on screen now. You actually get like a Cerberus-type demon dog instead, and it does give it a really nice look and feel. And the Sweeper, like I said, is just a great gun to use. It's actually a necessity if you want to try and get to those higher rounds on Mob of the Dead. Same with most Wonder Weapons on most maps, you always want to try and get the Wonder Weapon because that's the thing that's going to get you to the higher rounds. And we're on round 20 now, which isn't really that high, but you can see the Sweeper is going to work. And it will continue to go to work. Probably a one-shot kill, I'd say, up to round um, 30 at least before it starts taking them to crawlers. And yeah, it's a really, really good Wonder Weapon. Probably not the best. It's not as good as a Slick yeah. with Fire before they nerfed it. Nowhere near as good as the Thunder Gun, and it doesn't quite feel as good as the Wonder Waff, but compared to the other guns, it is definitely up there. Um, but what I want to say, guys, is I'm actually going to do a video based on sprint speeds, and I might actually test all the guns out and show you their sprint speeds to show what they actually mean. But um, you can still run trains with the Sweeper, it doesn't feel too sluggish, which is really cool. But based on how I feel about this gun, I'm going to give it four foxes out of five. Because it is a good gun, but it's just not my favourite wonder weapon, basically. I'm not uh, completely sold on the sweeper, but like I say, it is a necessity to get up to the higher rounds. And it's still quite a cool vibe, consisting of a Gatling gun and blunderbuss, so I'm not going to argue with that. Anyway, guys, coming to the end of the episode, and I'll be covering the Acid Gat, the Vitriolic Withering, the Hell's Retriever, Hell's Redeemer, and Golden Spork in the next episode. So please, this episode took me ages to make. If you can like the hell of it, that'd be awesome. And I shall see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.